What's going on guys, this is Rob. Uh, if you guys enjoy my content, make sure you hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit that little bell so you never miss out on my sexy voice. Okay, so we are getting into the death of the mighty Thor. And this is an amazing story. I mean, this is the end of Jane Foster, right? Like we've talked about this before. Anybody who read Jason Aaron's Thor God of Thunder knew that Jane Foster was gonna go away. She was never gonna stay Thor permanently. We saw that at the end of the story. Like we saw that at the end of Thor God of Thunder that like Odin's son gets the hammer back eventually and Jane Foster was only ever a temporary thing. Why people freaked out about her becoming Thor, I'm not really sure. I assume it's because they didn't read that story and so they didn't know, which is fine. But nonetheless, this basically deals with the return of a villain called Mangog. Now, I wanna talk about Mangog for a second because this guy is a beast he is an absolute hoss but it's kind of funny because he was initially designed to be a one-off in marvel comics uh, he originally appeared in thor issues 154 through 157 by stan lee and jack kirby and the whole idea of introducing man god was to basically say like over the course of asgard's history odin had done some pretty seedy things now for the most part odin had been depicted as a guy who had like a nefarious past we didn't know a whole lot about it but it was one of those guys where he just kind of did whatever he felt needed to be done but in this three-part story, it was basically revealed to us that somewhere along the line, Odin had essentially like destroyed a race of beings and that this race of beings had kind of poured their hatred and their animosity into a singular being and that arose in the form of Mangog. Now, this was very, very like cloak and dagger. There wasn't a whole lot of explanation offered there. And so over the course of that story, by the time issue number 157 came around, what ended up happening is the beings that were destroyed by, uh, by Odin had been returned to the physical form. And because of that, their animosity and hatred had no reason to exist. And so the result was that Mangog basically went away. Now, in Thor issues, God, issue 194, Five, I think. I want to say it was in 1972. It was written by Jerry Conway. And what Jerry Conway did was actually bring Mangog back. And that's one of the big issues. It's because technically there was no reason for him to be alive. When it comes to the character of, of Mangog, usually this means that like everybody's going to get wrecked. Now, the only real exception to this came in Walt Simonson's run of uh, of the Mighty Thor, I guess of, of Thor, when you ended up having Mangog who was basically beaten by Thor. And technically that shouldn't have really happened. Either it should have been a standstill or Mangog should have won. The problem with this is that Mangog's desire is to destroy Asgard. And so if he had won, then Asgard would have been obliterated. So uh, it was one of those things where like Mangog kind of had to lose. But the whole Walt Simonson run of Thor was really designed for the purpose of like taking what Jack Kirby originally did in Tales of Asgard, rolling that into the main Thor stories, and then just kind of rebuilding the entirety of the Asgardian mythos, especially because of the fact that Thor had been struggling for a few years between the time that Jack Kirby and Stan Lee stopped writing him and the time that, that Walt Simonson picked it up. So the fact remains here, what this does is this initially picks up with Mangog facing off against War Thor. Now again, we did that whole story arc with War Thor. Basically, uh, this is Volkstag wheeling the hammer of Ultimate Thor. And really what happens here is like Mangog rolls right through him. Mangog just keeps coming and coming one step after another. And no matter what War Thor does, he can't win. There's no conceivable way he can defeat this guy. And so what ends up happening is you end up having Mangog who basically seizes the hammer of War Thor and then just crushes it with his bare hands. That's the power of Mangog. Is it's just all this hatred and all this vitriol coalesced into a singular being given physical form. And so it's absolutely insane in terms of all the power that he possesses. The following this battle, we pick up with Jane Foster, who's just kind of arm wrestling Hercules, you know? And it's kind of funny because Hercules is like, hey, like, you know, whenever you're not fighting against villains or something like that, like if you want to get together, you know, and like knock some boots, you know, I'm down. <laughs> Which is amazing, but it's basically uh, Odin's son showing up to Jane Foster and saying, you need to come with me because War Thor has been absolutely wrecked and uh, something's amiss here. Like there is a being out there who just totally decimated War Thor and we have to find out who this is. Now, of course, what ended up happening too is Volksag himself had just kind of basically said like, Mangog is coming. And this is when like Odin's son basically reveals to Jane Foster like, Mangog is on his way. And if Mangog is on his way, we're all basically doomed because it took everything I had to go toe to toe with him and I don't know if you can handle this. Which is true. Like, no one knows if Jane Foster would be able to hold her own against someone like Mangog. But in this scenario, like, he basically says, look, like, you can do what you can, hold off as best you can. At the end of the day, this may be a battle that you will lose, that you will not survive. And so what ends up happening is she travels to Asgard to basically besiege Odin. Now, remember, in terms of, like, the whole War of Realms, which is still going on, that's been the whole ongoing idea of, like, Jason Aaron's run on Thor. Everything else has been a secondary plot. For the most part, the Nine Realms are in chaos. They're in turmoil. 
Well, this whole war is going on and like Odin is almost nowhere to be found. He's just sitting inside his throne room, standing next to Freya and that's really about it. And so Jane Foster showing up, this is what's so cool. Jane Foster shows up as just herself, cancer ridden Jane Foster, no more capable of defeating Odin than just any normal human being out there. But she basically shows up and says like, either you can sit in there and be a coward or you can come out here and you can issue the order to recall all the Asgardians from across the nine realms and tell them like they have to return here because we have to face Mangog. We have to face him together. And it's not really one of those things like if we all hold hands, we'll win. It's one of those things like if we're not all here, we're all going to die. The other thing here is that Cold Boar's son, the brother of Thor, is basically like, like a, a steward, more or less, of the throne of Asgard while Odin is kind of out there. And really, Cold Boar's son is completely ill-equipped to be the one to run the show. He's not incompetent, right? Like, he's not a goof. The issue with this is that he doesn't really have the wisdom of Odin. So there are times when, like, he should stand down and he doesn't. In this instance, he should recall all the forces of Asgard, but he's not. He's kind of saying strong and saying, look, we'll do our own thing. You know, we've got this sorted out. Odin uh, basically makes his appearance. He shows up and says, look, I will not stand for anyone calling me a coward. Like I will not stand for anyone being out here telling me that I've somehow failed, that I'm somehow derelict in my duties. Like I am Odin. I run Asgard. I was running Asgard before you were born. I will run Asgard after you are dead. I have seen more than you could possibly imagine. I faced off against celestials. I've done all kinds of different things. I've went toe to toe against Galactus. You are just a chick who showed up on the moon one day got lucky and picked up the hammer. Get out of here. That's Odin's entire response to this whole thing. And it's so cool because I'd be curious to ask Jason Aaron why he didn't take things in this direction. Odin could just obliterate Jane Foster, especially in her current form. I would wager the reason he doesn't do that is because of the fact that Thor was with Jane Foster for quite some time. And even though they're not together anymore, there's still a lot of connection between the two of them, even if they're only the closest of friends. And so to kill Jane Foster would be to alienate his son, potentially start a civil war in Asgard proper, and Odin would be forced to either choose a side, let the war commence, Asgard would just kind of be obliterated. So there would be consequences to that particular act. But what we end up having is Freya, who basically comes to, simply steps out and says like, Jane Foster's right. We have to do something. If we do not marshal our forces, we're all going to die. And so what we do is we switch to Heimdall, who of course is at the Rainbow Bridge, watching like he always does. And then in comes Mangog, having made his way to Asgard onto the Rainbow Bridge and like literally begins this onslaught. And that's something that I want you guys to, to notice here. This is not like an even battle, right? It's not like Heimdall's holding his own and he's holding off and doing the best he can. I mean, this is like, he's he's wrecked like that. There's no conflict here. He's bitten in half. The Rainbow Bridge is totally destroyed. That's the power of Mangog. The other half of this is Jane Foster's chemotherapy. That's how Jason Aaron put a clock on Jane Foster. That's basically how he said like, she's gonna die. That Jane Foster has cancer. She has breast cancer. Every time she changes into Thor, it washes away the chemotherapy. And so basically she starts back at square one. And so what this essentially means is that it's the equivalent of her having never undergone chemotherapy in the first place. It shortens her lifespan. And so you have like Doctor Strange, you have various people who were here trying to cure her. In truth, this is really just like a stopgap or a hope is really all it is. When Captain Marvel, the original Captain Marvel, died in 1984 in the death of his character by Jim Starlin, he died of cancer. So it is a foregone conclusion in Marvel Comics that when a character gets cancer, they die. There's no conceivable way to get past that. With Jane Foster having undergone, you know, chemotherapy multiple times, what ends up happening here is that she's essentially told, if you turn into Thor again, you will die. Like this is your last shot. Let the chemotherapy happen. Let it run its course because you're essentially, this, this whole scenario basically plays out like this is the first time you're basically undergoing chemotherapy. And so what ends up happening is a hammer basically appears and it's just got like, it, it speaks to her and says, look like Mangog is there. You have to fight. You have to show up. And that's the indication. Now, the other half of this is we switch to Freya who basically takes control of the destroyer armor. Now, again, this is one of those huge moments. The destroyer armor is kind of like this huge creation that was, that was uh, really performed by Odin. It was originally designed to stop the third host of the of the celestials. I can never remember if it was the third or the fourth. But regardless of the circumstances, the destroyer armor was created to combat the celestials. But because of the fact that like Mangog showing up here and just taking the full brunt of the power of the destroyer armor, there's nothing that can be done. It's one of these things where it's like Thor has to respond. That's the power of Mjolnir, the power of the hammer. This is something that I also want you guys to notice. Odin is terrified and we never see that, but it's always been that way. It's always been the idea that like the Mangog is the one thing that scares Odin more than anybody else because one, it's like all his past sins 
come to haunt him. And two, like there's no real conceivable way, or at least there shouldn't be any conceivable way to stop Mangog. And so Odin being terrified for his life, Mangog taunting him the entire time. I've destroyed your destroyer armor. I've destroyed your rainbow bridge. I've destroyed everybody who's coming for me. I'm coming for you, pops. Like I'm coming for you, old man. And his curtains, the sun is setting on the Asgardian empire. That's just the way it is. But the other thing to keep in mind here is like with Thor and Odin's son traveling back to Asgard, this is cool because it's him and his father facing off against like Mangok. But the reality of the situation is they don't really expect to win. Instead, this is kind of like the whole scenario with like Hyperion and Odin's son facing off against the Beyonders at the conclusion of Hickman's Avengers and New Avengers, right? Like they knew they were going to lose. It was one of those things of like, if we're going to go out, we're not going to go out sitting in chairs. We're not going to go out and just let Mangog destroy us. We're going to go out in a blaze of glory. Like if our legends survive, Survive, then like people will speak of the day that Thor and Odin's son fought to their last breath against the Mangog and just like fought with honor and died at the bitter end. I mean, that's, 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 or I'm sorry, uh, you know, fought and died and, and like, you know, fought with, fought at the bitter end. Like that's going to be the whole story. Like that, that's what they're shooting for. Because remember Asgard itself is very much like rooted in the honor of combat. And so really like they don't expect to win. There's no real way for them to win here. And so what you end up having is Jane Foster seizing control of the hammer, turning back into Thor and then racing off to Asgard. And this, again, this basically means means like Jane Foster is going to die. And so what you end up having is her showing up and like holding her own as best she can and facing off against the Mangog. And she's able to, she's able to do pretty well just because of the nature of the hammer, because the hammer is so powerful. But in reality, again, like this guy is supposed to be unstoppable. And Jason Aaron stays true for the most part to the nature of Mangog. Despite all the power that Jane Foster has with this hammer, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter because what she does is she basically like goes to hurl Mangog into the sun. Like the whole idea is to just throw him into the sun, call it a day, let him just like burn alive, you know, in this insane amount of heat. But Mangog manages to kind of ricochet his way around and then basically come back. And when he does, like he just starts wrecking Jane Foster again. Like he just starts tearing her apart alongside like Odin's son and alongside like Odin himself. It really does seem to be the end. And so what happens is Jane Foster basically wraps the Mangog in chains and then like throw the hammer into the sun with Mangog in tow. And so instead of him just kind of ricocheting around like he did before, he actually flies into the sun directly. But like everyone, like like Odin and Odin's son and Freya, everyone's screaming at Jane Foster not to do this because if they do, it'll destroy the hammer. But at the end of the day, like she doesn't care. The only thing that matters to Jane Foster is destroying Mangog, like preserving what's left of Asgard. And so where the hammer flies into the sun, Mangog flies into the sun and both are seemingly destroyed. At this moment, at this point right now, there is no more, no more Mjolnir. The hammer of Thor is gone. The Mangog's destroyed and everything and Asgard is safe. But Jane Foster ultimately succumbs to her cancer. She essentially just dies. I mean, there's there's nothing left for her there. So with that being said, guys, uh, if you are new here to Comics Explained, make sure you guys hit the sub button to become part of the Rob Corps. If you guys enjoy this video, make sure you drop a like. And yeah, like I'm really curious because the Aftermath issue comes out in about a month or probably about three weeks now, maybe two weeks because I think this story is about two weeks out. Uh, but like, yeah, so so we'll get like the Aftermath. I'm curious to see. I mean, the hammer will come back. People are probably going to freak out and just be like, no, Mjolnir can't be destroyed. Like, yeah, you're right. It can't be destroyed. It will come back. <laughs> I mean, I don't imagine why it wouldn't. Like, it's, it's definitely going to make its return. How it makes its return, I don't know. Because there's no more ultimate Thor hammer. That hammer was crushed by Mangog. Like, Beta Ray Bill still has Stormbreaker, but he's floating out there somewhere. I'm willing to surmise whatever weapon Thor gets in the comics will be the weapon he gets in, in Infinity War. Marvel's just going to roll it over. <laughs> That's exactly what's going to happen. But anyway, guys, uh, yeah, if you're new here to Comics Explained, make sure you guys hit the sub button to become part of the Rob Corps if you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you drop a like, and I will catch you all later. Peace.